We are doing something different today. Can you hear me? Yeah. You're talking really loud. Or is that on purpose? It's because I'm deaf. Okay. Well, today we are going to do what everybody does on YouTube, and we're going to do a reactionary video. Do you have one up? Are you ahead of yourself already? I was actually watching it already. <laughs> All right, we're doing a reactionary video. We're going to have you, a comedian, me, react to some of movies' funniest scenes. Uh, I would like for this to be more incorporated into Comics Corner going on um, with things like TV series or TV shows, maybe other comics. There's a lot of funny stuff. There's a lot of funny stuff. But we today, can react to. Because I have already so many options, we're just sticking with movies. So I have a list for you. You're going to get to put on those headphones mm -hmm. and you're going to get to watch a clip and it's hopefully going to be really funny. Okay. Okay. Everything does suck. Or does it? Hello? This is Scott Pilgrim. Oh, hey, Knives. <laughs> What's that? You're outside? What is Scott here? Oh, uh, you know what? He just left. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay. From the standpoint of, uh, for comedy's sake, that when you're when you're dealing with a when you're dealing with a movie, the entire movie is the context, and so there are things that that are funny that stand by themselves, like this particular scene where where he uh, where he dives out the window. Um, but it's it's funnier because it's in keeping with the whole rest of the movie. The whole the whole Scott Pilgrim versus the world. The whole movie is like this. It's there's a bunch of everything happens like real fast. There's a lot of jump cuts and there's a lot of, of quick reactions. And the thing about comedy is it's always about surprise. And as we I'm going to repeat myself a lot in these clips because comedy is about surprise. And the more unexpected the the thing is the bigger the potential for laugh and so you've got this girl coming to the door the background story is he's trying to scott is trying to avoid her he doesn't want to uh obviously doesn't want to talk to her and so the, the uh the reason it's funny is because there's absolutely no reason for him to dive out the window he al she already can't see him he's already off out, out of view and so his attempt to to avoid her is actually the thing that causes her to to see him and notice him, and so that is, from a comedy standpoint, it's a it's a contrast, it's a juxtaposition. He's trying to avoid her, and so the effort that he makes to avoid her is the thing that reveals him to her, and that's funny. It, it's funny. There is no. Then he walks behind her. <laughs> and then he walks behind her, right? Uh, I love that clip. And comes up, uh, and comes up from behind. Oh hi! So, uh, the 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 key to this is that it's a surprise, and it's also an extreme reaction. It's going way too far. There was there was no reason, no reason to dive out the window. He could have just stayed quietly behind the door, and everything would have been fine. Uh, okay. the so screen. this is from the Naked Gun, the mm -hmm. Naked Gun series. I think it's the first one. And I'm pretty sure you actually told me to watch these films. So I know you've seen it, mm -hmm. but it pops up on timelines for me every once in a while. Oh, this is such a great and I clip. And I love it. And I just want you to react to it, because I know you'll like it, and I want you to tell us what you think of it. Okay. Lieutenant Drebin, away squad. Oh, I remember you, Drebin. Well, what do you want? I want to ask you some questions. You're familiar with that face? I don't know. My memory ain't so great. Oh, yeah? Maybe this will refresh your memory. I don't know. It's still kind of hazy. How about this? Yeah, I remember him. I used to see him around. Why do you want to know? I can't tell you that. Well, maybe this will help. I really don't think I should. Yeah, you still don't think so? All right, his name is Nordberg. He's a cop. He was no cop. He was dealing H. What? I'm telling you, he was dirty. Oh, you sniveling scum. I ought to run you in right now. All right, all right. He worked at Ludwig Shipping. He tried to push something on one of my boys, I swear it. So what are you going to do about it, copper? Well, why should I tell you? <laughs> Maybe this will help. I still don't think I should tell you. Can you spot me a 20? 
How about now? All right, I'm going down to Ludwig's office. I'll find out if you're telling the truth. All right. Comedy is, is surprise, but it's also a, a different take on familiar... If you have a different angle on a familiar scene, then uh, that's also funny as well. And so the expectation that everybody has, the assumption that everybody makes, is this is going to be a typical uh, police inquiry that happens on the street. We see it a million times in, in movies and television shows where the cop has to bribe somebody to give him information. And so that's how it starts out. And they, they establish that. It's like, I, I don't remember, I don't remember the guy's name. Well, maybe this will help you remember. I don't know, it's still kind of funny. Yeah, so he gives him two, gives him two 20s. He goes, all right, now I remember. And so we've established something that, that's very familiar to us. And then uh, when he, when, when the guy who's being bribed says, well, what do you want to know for? To have the cop say, I don't think I can tell you. And then he bribes the cop. It's just... It's, it's brilliant. It's genius because we've never seen that before. That is not expected. We're not, we're not expecting then the, the guy to turn back around and bribe the policeman. And so from a comedic standpoint, it's, it's shattering assumptions again. It's taking a thing that's familiar and showing it in, a, in an unfamiliar way. And anytime you take, anytime you take anything and, and it's familiar and recognizable and you do it... Um, in a slightly different way, you've got comedy. There's nothing... If, if it hadn't been... The, the setup in that is you've got the policeman bribing the, you know, the criminal or the, uh, or the, seedy, the seedy person. Um, that was set up at the, at the beginning. So that's, that's what sets up the rest of the joke. If, if we didn't have that at the beginning, if we didn't have the policeman and the seedy person having a familiar exchange, then it wouldn't have been funny to have that guy giving, you know, Drebin 20 bucks because there wouldn't have been any context for it. Right. And so the reason it's funny is because of the, of the first part of that. And a lot of times um, people don't understand how important the setup to a joke is. If you don't have, if you don't have a good setup, then you don't have any joke, so. Well, and maybe, I think the other reason that this one stands out for a lot of people is I don't think that this was being done a lot yet. My generation has a lot of these films now, mm -hmm. um, but back when The Naked Gun and Airplane, you know, kind of the same writers, were they making were the these same. movies, they, uh, that wasn't done yet. That was not how movies right. were made. There was no satire. You know, I grew up in the age of like Scream and right. you know, we've got all sorts of hot shots. You know, those came out in like the 90s mm -hmm. and stuff. But before then, People weren't expecting this, right? There was right. There was a, a genre, a genre of just absurdity and silliness that that really happened in the. You know, a lot of people think Airplane was the first movie to do that, and it was. I, I don't. It wasn't. It wasn't really the first one to do that. There were some other movies in front of Airplane, but they didn't catch on. Airplane was the one that kind of, um, that kind of made it culturally. Renowned, it, it was like the the general public understood when, when Airplane came out. They understood, oh, this is a this is a new thing that we haven't seen before. But there were some people on the fringe. There were some some outsiders who had been making movies like that. There's there's nothing new under the sun. But Airplane was the one that made it that made it kind of a household thing. Um, and so, yeah, then after that you had Airplane, and you had Naked Gun, and you had Hot Shots, and you had... Uh, Mel Brooks actually was kind of doing movies like that before, or at the same time as Airplane. His, uh, but Mel Brooks... Um, Mel Brooks had a, had a level of... I don't want to say sophistication. <laughs> you can say but, sophistication. But his wasn't quite as... His, his was still... Uh, it wasn't quite as rapid fire as what it was with, with Airplane. And there were some little vignettes of absurdity. But, but Airplane and the Naked Gun, it's just wall-to-wall. Just -wall. It, it, and, and there's even little insane things that happen kind of in the background that aren't part of the story. Um, and so, yeah, but this is, yeah, this is a funny scene. <laughs> um, so this next one is The Three Amigos. 
And again, it's another one of those movies that we could take many scenes from, and it's another one you recommended to me, and uh, I pulled out this one uh, specifically for a comedy rule that I know you're going to talk about. I've already started it. Oh, gee. Okay, thanks. So they're riding across a desert. It's a very familiar scene. This is the setup. They're out in the desert. They're very hot. They don't have any water. Steve Martin goes to drink from his canteen and he just gets a couple of drops of water. We've seen that before too. All of this is a setup. They're very thirsty. Martin Short just gets a mouthful of sand, <laughs> which, which again, you, so you take the unexpected, the expected is there's no water, the unexpected is that it's full of sand. And then Chevy Chase <laughs> has all sorts of water. <coughs> And he's paying no attention to his friends, to his amigos, rinsing his water, spitting, <laughs> spitting it up. And then he just throws the canteen that's still half full, he throws it away, which, which he wouldn't do in the desert. And then he puts on lip balm, <laughs> because his lips are chapped. <laughs> <laughs> and offers it to his friend. Uh, so we have a very familiar scene. A guy's out in the desert and there's no water. So Steve Martin establishes that they're running out of water. He has just a little bit of, of water in his canteen. And the thing about comedy is that you, you have to keep escalating. If, you, if you're going to establish, once you establish a thing, you can't repeat that thing. So it, it wouldn't work to have Martin Short also drink and have a couple of drops of, of water in his canteen because that's the same joke um, and it's not even really a joke it's not it's not funny to see a guy run out of water in the desert and so Steve Martin establishes the premise he establishes that there's there's a shortage of water and then Martin Short dumps sand in his mouth from his canteen and the reason that's funny is two reasons one it, it ups the ante that Steve Martin has established. You know, it's not only is he out of water, he's getting no water. And then the question is, how did all that sand get in his canteen in the first place? It had to be put, it had to be put there. So there's no, it's absurd. There's no, there's no way that you would, if you run out of water, once your canteen is empty, it doesn't fill up with sand and dust. And so that's absurd. But it, it ups the ante and it makes it even more desperate. Then you have to shatter the assumption. See, so the assumption now, after we watch Martin Short, is that Chevy Chase is really going to be. What, what's going to happen with Chevy Chase? I mean, what, what's he going to have in his canteen that's going to be that's going to be more that's going to be worse than dirt? Um, and so the assumption is that it's going to be it's going to be even worse. But it because it's comedy and it's excellent comedy, they flip it. They shatter that assumption. And so with the third person, with Chevy Chase. Now we have an abundance of water. He's got a canteen full of water. And he's got so much water that he's like spitting it out of the ground. And then after he's had his fill, rather than doing what you would expect a person to do who's part of a group in the desert, and what we've seen a million times in movies is, oh, here, let's ration this water. Let's, let's share it because this is the only water that we have left. Instead of doing that, he just hurls the canteen onto the onto the dirt onto the dune, and all of the extra water just pours out on the on the sand. It's genius. It's genius because it it shatters everything. All of the conventions of of decency and human uh, compassion go right out the window. He's not giving a thought to the other two guys who are supposedly his friends uh, going through the desert. It's genius. The rule of three is uh, that, and this is a, this is a, one of the laws of laughter, and there's no explanation for it. It just is like this, and we can philosophize about why it is, and nobody really knows. But the comedy rule of three says that if you're going to do, if, if you're going to make a, a statement, for example, you're going to say that three guys are out of water, Three guys are, are dying of thirst in the desert. The first two guys establish the thing. The first two guys establish that, 
that there's no water, that we are dying of dehydration in the water. That's Chevy Chase and Steve Martin, or, or Steve Martin and Martin Short established that. The third guy, or the third thing in comedy, is always completely uh, different. It always goes completely off the rails and goes in a slightly different direction. So you've got A and B that are predictable, and then C is totally unpredictable. And that was what Chevy Chase did. Chevy Chase, was, nobody was expecting him to have water. And then, once he has water, to just waste it, because they're in the desert. And so that's the com that follows the comedy rules of three. A and B are what you would expect. C is not what you would expect. And it's always outrageous and different. And it works. And well, it works. In fact, we could even do a reactionary video of just the comedy rule of three because I can think of like ten examples off the top of my head. Yeah, we can. That, that's your job, to line yeah, those up. Yeah, my job is to make It's up. not my job to do that. I, I guess, did you like it? Do you want to do more of these? I liked it. I always like to do react. We can do reaction videos um, frequently. All right. All right. Well, I think that we'll need to do a few more of these. I have many more movie scenes, so I guess that we'll need to make a part, part two, maybe even a part three, and and get and do this some more. Get this really ironed out because this has been. All right. Go ahead. Never a really good idea to zoom in on my face. Okay, well things well, have got to go really, really wrong if you are many. zooming in on my face. I already know this clip, so do we need to re do we need to record me reacting to it? Yes, that's the whole point. I, <laughs> that's what this is. Sit down. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks. What? You have to give some sort of sign off. You can't up real fast. Hey, thanks for joining no, us for our first reactionary. <laughs>